it took maybe a good what, ten years. I finally met um, Betty Shabonis. Actually, on a plane, we had renamed we had named uh, Crane Junior College Malcolm X. Elijah Malik Shabonis, Malcolm X College. And so she was coming back from a celebration, and I was on my way to New York. That's when I met her. I mean, she was sitting, actually in coach, and I was in coach, and she was sitting by herself. So I went up and sit down beside her, and we started talking. And that was the start of a long friendship, all the way up until she, um, her untimely death. But I look at the Shabazz family as part of what I call the first families. Uh, Mick Evers family, uh, Malcolm X family, Martin Luther King family. So Mega, Malcolm, and Martin were all assassinated. And they were all assassinated and doing work for us. You see? And that it's not necessary for us to, at any level, try to um, put them in any order of importance because they all lost their lives working for us. It must be understood that, well, certainly with Malcolm and with King, um, this is kind of these American tragedies that I don't think the children of either family, of the families, ever recovered. And I do not, and I know for a fact with the uh, Shabazz family that, uh, for the most part, the uh, girls did not receive. Uh, nowhere near the kind of support that the King family received. So after Malcolm was, was assassinated, brutally assassinated, everything fell on Benny. You know, uh, I do know for the uh, Shabazz children that Betty Shabazz tried to make life as normal as possible. And this is why she went back to school. And for the most part, she kept them in private institutions. You know, they went to the International uh, High School in New York. And she tried to make life as quote-unquote normal as possible. 